Good morning and welcome to St. James's Online. Um, it's great to have you with us, um, especially if you're joining us for the first time. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent and is Mothering Sunday. Sylvie is going to read the Gospel and Derek is preaching for us and Janet will be leading our prayers. Uh, if you're watching online on Sunday morning, then do say hello and exchange the piece by using the message facility on Facebook. It's always good to know who's actually with us, so that would be really good to see your messages. So we begin our worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Our first hymn this morning is Angel Voices Ever Singing. join together for our prayers of penitence. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for Mothering Sunday. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, Watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 34, verses 11 to 20. I will say the odd verses if you will join in with the even and the refrain. So we begin with the refrain. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord, who is there, who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. And take our hearts and inflame them by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There were two teenagers. They ordered their mum to stay in bed one Mother's Day morning. As she lay there looking forward to breakfast in bed, the smell of bacon floated up from the kitchen. But after a good long wait, she finally went downstairs to investigate and she found them both sitting at the table eating bacon and eggs. As a surprise for Mother's Day, one explained, we decided to cook our own breakfast. And so, yes, it is Mothering Sunday. However, with the ban on travelling so we can't see our relatives, and the lack of an all-age service with kids in church, it does feel rather a little subdued, unreal. Well, I hope you have a good day, however you celebrate it. But this change in tone gives us an opportunity to think about mothering with a little less sentimentality, uh, smoothing of the edges, than we might usually do. I know the subject in itself is very sensitive to some. Those who had a difficult childhood or never knew their mother, who wanted children but they never had their own, or those who have lost children through estrangement or death. So let us look at the subject of love and how our ideal of motherhood embodies that, and what that tells us in turn about God's love, if you like, God's motherly love. Of course, our language and culture is horribly at cross-purposes about love. We use that four-letter word in so many ways. Perhaps for that reason we need to qualify it, and we used to say true love, and now I think we more often speak of unconditional love. And it is said that this is what everyone is looking for, unconditional love. One quotation that is often repeated is this, I want love to be simple. I want to trust without thinking. I want to be generous with my affection and patience and love unconditionally. It is easier to love a person with their flaws than to weed through them. I want to love the whole person, not parts, and this is how I want to be loved. But for every post about the wonder of unconditional love, there are three on the internet saying, can it exist? So, love is rare, unconditional love is. It might be romantic to say that you love a person with their flaws, but what if that flaw is a violent temper, repeated unfaithfulness, criminality? Surely then love has some right to have conditions. One only needs to think about the divorce figures to realise that what began as an expression of unconditional love, well, seems to have had some conditions. But what people generally seem to agree on is that a love a mother has for her child is the most demonstrable example of unconditional love. No, no doubt there are hormones involved, as well as a kind of natural selection for mothers who bond with their children. And yet, we know what that is. We know what a woman might mean when she says she was filled up with love for her newborn. She didn't know she could love like this. Of course, that's not a universal experience. But beyond the maternity ward, real life intrudes. I have the perfect son, one woman says. Does he smoke? No, he doesn't. Does he drink whiskey? No, he doesn't. Does he ever come home late? No, he doesn't. Well, I guess you really do have the perfect son. How old is he? Oh, he'll be six months old next Wednesday. So, I'm not entirely sure that the phrase unconditional love gets us all the way we want to go. What I want to suggest is that what we really celebrate on Mothering Sunday is selfless love in the sense that love is the giving of the self for the good of another. Think about it. 
Mother embraces discomfort and inconvenience in pregnancy, an extreme pain in childbirth, with consequent medical issues, perhaps physical or mental. She'll go without sleep for months and probably years. She often goes without to provide for her children. She might take a financial hit. Her career might be affected for the ill. No doubt she'll feel tired, drained, frustrated and challenged. Of course, I realise that these things apply to fathers, but probably more to mothers, and we're just thinking about mothers now. So I think that today, as we think of our parents, and particularly our mums, we recognise that we owe a debt that can never be paid back in full. That gift of nurture that has been given to us. But what we do, we obey scripture and we honour our mother and father. And to some extent we reciprocate that love, but also we recognise that what we can't pay back, we can pay forward to the next generation. Now the Bible in a number of places describes God in motherly ways. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she is born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you, Isaiah says, God says. And Jesus, although he tends to describe God as father, he himself describes, he, he describes himself as protecting his disciples like a mother hen protects her chicks. At the moment, morning prayer starts with words of Anselm. Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Now, part of our uncertainty about what love is and what a mum does is due to us missing out on context. A mother might be affectionate to her daughter or firm. She might encourage her son, but at other times need to tell him off. The same is true with God and his love. So we need to think carefully about this. Love always expresses itself in a context. So in the widest context, God expresses his love providentially. He provides. In Genesis, God says everything he's made is good. And every person is made in his image. Jesus speaks about God's care for the sparrows, the birds of the air. He knows the hair, number of hairs on our head. He causes the sun to rise on the just and the unjust. He provides. And of course, a basic responsibility a mother has is to care for her children. It's a biological, gene-driven thing. But sometimes love is what energises her actions. The joke at the beginning only works when we recognise that mums, if anyone, they're the ones who cook breakfast. We say a woman's work is never done. During the pandemic, there was a poster on the bus shelter that said, I've been going without my food, so my children don't. However, most of the time, children just take what is provided for them for granted. It's what parents are for, after all. Similarly, God gets little credit for providence. So God provides, just as a mother, God created and sustains the universe. He provides. And then he puts things right. Who do children run to when they're hurt? In my experience, mostly the mum. They're more likely to be physically closer to the infant, they have a stronger attachment, their presence promises safety. We might use the word nurture here, but that sounds a little time limited for children. Even as adults, don't we feel we're likely to get a better hearing or a more sympathetic response for our mothers? And perhaps Maybe they're better peacemakers. Well, it's hard to make rules. But even if dads do these things too, we expect mums to put things right. Our reading had that most famous phrase, God so loved the world. So here's a different context to God's love. Not simply providing, but putting things right. Because we go on to read that people prefer darkness than the light that Jesus brings. They hide away. But God loves the world. So the passage tells us that Father and Son act together to put things right. The Archbishop wrote this week, The mission of the church is the same in every culture and country, to demonstrate, through its actions and words, that God's offer of unconditional love to every human being through Jesus Christ 
calls us to holiness and hope. As a mother loves her toddler with a tantrum, or the moody teenager in a strop, her son learning the violin, or her daughter experimenting with fashion, well, she loves all her children in the same way that God loves the world and all the people in it, and is active in trying to put things right. But will they come to him? And I can't find the right word exactly for the next thing I want to say. It's something of the biblical idea of peace, but I'm calling it enjoyable company. Something about a happy family enjoying each other's company. It might be a boisterous party, or a pizza in front of the TV on Saturday night, a walk in the mountains, or a paddle in the sea. There are expressions of mutual love and affection, and often the mum initiates them. Do you know Psalm 131? It's God's, uh, the psalm is speaking. But I have learned to feel safe and satisfied just like a young child on its mother's lap. Comfortable in God's presence. So here is another context, a particular demonstration of God's love to those who have been reborn spiritually, who are his adopted daughters and sons. And this is unconditional in the sense that it's grace-led. We are God's children from his initiative and his choosing, not by our own earning. So Jesus tells us that we will abide in him and with him. Just as the peace between mother and child can be broken, we know for ourselves how we break the communion we have with God. And so Jesus has to say, abide in my love. And Paul tells us that we can grieve the Spirit by our actions. And John in his letter commands, commands, abide in him. So God longs to be with his people in shalom peace. But just as in family life, we need to make every effort to be obedient to love God and our neighbour as ourselves. We will take a wrong turn if we believe God's conditional love, unconditional love, can be presumed on. He wants to love us and us to love him. And that's the best we can have. The Westminster Shorter Catechism famously asks, what is the chief end of man? And answered to glorify God and enjoy him forever. On a good day, a mother loves selflessly. She provides for her children, puts things right, and enjoys her children. Every day, this is what God does in a motherly way. He provides for everything in creation. He puts things right by bringing salvation to everyone who lives on the planet. And he enjoys the company of those who answer the call to holiness and hope. So hear the words of Jesus again. Abide in my love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the people you have provided who have loved us. Maybe our biological mothers, maybe others. But we thank you that through them we have known an expression of your love. Help us in turn to pass on the love we have received to others. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, through your teaching and example, you showed us the special place of mothers and families. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, we come together in prayer to offer thanks and blessing brought to us by mothers through all generations. On this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for our birth mothers. We also celebrate the mothering that we have received from many sources throughout our lives and pray that with your help and guidance, we can pass this caring love on to others. 
We give thanks for the role of our Mother Church and pray for blessing on its leaders, Justin, our Archbishop, Sarah and Graham, our bishops, and Derek, Jackie, Julian and Sylvie here at St James's. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the wonders of our Mother Earth. You have provided us with this precious resource and we all have the responsibility to share in the care of it. We ask that our national leaders work together to promote peace and prosperity and strive constantly against the evils of war, poverty and starvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In our own community, we ask your blessing on all those around us who use their caring skills to nurture and protect others. We think especially of teachers welcoming children back into schools after weeks of relative isolation lost learning opportunities and anxiety. We pray for all our neighbours who may, unbeknown be to us, be suffering behind closed doors from loneliness, mental health issues or threat of physical violence. As the programme of vaccination against COVID-19 rolls out across the country, Help us to accept with patience the constraints of the rules that we are still living under. May we work together to care for each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort, comfort all those who suffer in body or mind. Be with their families and friends as they face illness, disability or pain. We pray for people whose chronic illnesses have worsened through the last year and for their loved ones who've been unable to spend time with them and supporting them. We give you thanks for the tireless commitment of doctors, nurses and all health and social care workers who are giving their skills and time at great personal risk. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Welcome into your heavenly kingdom all those who have died in the faith. We think especially of people whose lives have been cut short by the pandemic or who have been separated from their loved ones and family as their life approaches its end. Be with them and remain with them on their final journey to your everlasting care. In a moment of quiet reflection, we think of those known to us. We call to mind those parishioners and family members whose anniversary falls at this time. Of Alice Underdown, Edward Weston, Robert Prentice, John Denton, Sunil Demel, Bessie Clements and Lawrence Whedon. May we come one day to share with them the fullness of your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us find time and opportunity to share God's peace. And so we come to the second hymn, which is Tell Out My Soul. this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, we shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. 
Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world. You free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. taught us to call God our Father, so in faith 
and trust, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Hi, I'm back home for the notices. On Thursday, as usual, we'll have a 9.30 communion service here in church, and then there'll be a vicarage coffee morning after that at 10.30 on Zoom. And the link was in the email that went out yesterday. And then Thursday evening, another uh, occasion where we meet as a Lent group. Um, so that link was on Zoom too. I'm really wanting to tell you in advance, well in advance now, that our annual meeting is planned for Sunday the 25th of April. Uh, after morning service in church, uh, we'll regather uh, both in church and on Zoom. And of course at the annual meeting we normally elect church council members. This year there'll be at least one vacancy on the PCC, the church council. And if you would like to put someone forward or explore what being on the PCC means, then speak to me or Gwyneth, or Nick. But then particularly, and I want to underline, is uh, we're looking for two church wardens. 
I gave you some more information about that in the email yesterday. But at the very least, uh, be praying for the right people to hear the call. But perhaps that person is you. Uh, there are some essential admin aspects of the job, but primarily it's an invitation to be part of the leadership of the church and help steer the ship forward. Please speak to me or Gwyneth if uh, you'd like to know more about being church warden. Uh, it's been good to be together today, even in this extended sense. I uh, hope uh, that you've been encouraged and your heart has been warmed to think of God's love for you in a motherly uh, way. Uh, if you're watching on Sunday morning, then do come over to Zoom uh, for coffee and chat. And the link will be in the message bar now. And of course, it was in the email yesterday. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us live in peace. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and reflect God's glory. Amen.